today, or the phrase for today, is parameterized query. We get to do more parameterized queries today. And let's talk about what we had done last time, and then we can look at what we did last time, and then we can talk about what we're going to do today. Um, that, that's always a good approach, an approach I take, uh, and I think it's good for students to take, is when you look at a problem, again, take like a mental inventory and understand what parts of this problem you've seen before and what parts of the problem are different. And I think that's a good approach to take because if you do that, I think that sort of um, frames a problem and shows you what piece of it you need to focus on. All right. So we left off last time. Remember what we did last time? No, I, I, I think I do. Hmm. We'll find out now, won't we? We had a page that had a drop down that showed all our customers on it. We picked the customer from here, and it showed us a list of all their calls. It also showed us down here a count of the number of calls. Now again, you, you probably wouldn't write a page I had both on, on it. I was just demonstrating things, so you, you really wouldn't need, you really probably would never create a page I had both of this, but again, I, I just wanted to demonstrate um, how this, uh, you know, a, a couple different ways and using an aggregate uh, function in this one. Um, again, if I remember right, from a UI perspective, the visual aspect, this is a drop-down list. This is a grid view. And this was a details view. And now that I think about it, I think we also had a details view here. that showed the detail of that one customer. And supporting this, we had several SQL data sources. Remember that a SQL data source has at its root a query. All right? And in this case, the query was something like select star from customers. This was a different query because we're not looking at every customer. We're just wanting the selected customer. So this, the query was select star from customer where customer ID equals something, equals a parameter. And where does that parameter get filled in from? It gets filled in from the drop-down. Remember, the drop-down has two aspects. All drop-downs have two things. It has what the user sees, sort of the text, the display value. Then it has the value that's behind the scenes, the value that the script needs. So in this case, we were showing the customer name in this drop-down, yet behind the scenes, associated with each option is the value of the primary key because that's what we need here to do that. The query for this would be something like select star from calls where customer ID equals question mark. And again, that question mark gets filled in from the value of the dropdown. And then lastly, this was something like select count star from calls where customer ID equals question mark. So again, a good way to decide, uh, in this particular case, all four of these things have their own data source. Now that's not always the case. It's possible to have two visual controls that have the same data source. It's not unheard of, but not impossible. What you want to do, though, to identify whether it is the same data source or a different data source, 
is understand what the SQL statement needs to be. And prior to that even, if you just describe in words what the contents of that visual control should be, that will dictate whether it's a different um, data source or the same data source. For example, this guy needs to show all customers. This guy needs to show the one customer that matches the customer in the dropdown. All right? That's two different descriptions of the data source. Even forgetting about SQL statements, even just the, the English description of what is in each of those things is different. So that's a different data source. This is all the calls for the selected customer. Well, that's different still. And then finally, a count of the calls from the customer. Again, that's different still. So in determining whether you're going to use the same data source or a different data source, you look at it and, and just describe the data that's going to be in there. And if it's saying the same thing, then it's the same thing. If we had, for example, somewhere else on this page, and it would be possible to have that, a list of all customers, then we could use the same data source as we did for this one. All right? But in this case, we don't. Now, here's what our next step is. Our next step is that we want to, we said we wanted to do this. I wanted to click on the number of calls. I want to get rid of this from here and move it to its own page. Okay? I'm going to change the number of calls to be a link. All right? And that link is going to go to a page that's going to show me the details of all the calls. And it will show me some customer information as well. So that's the two things I'm going to change about this. All right? So we're going to change it so you pick the customer. It shows all the customer detail and the number of calls. We click on the number of calls. It takes us over to this page that has the name of the customer and it has the um, list of all the calls. Now, taking inventory of this and deciding what parts of this we've seen before and what parts of this we have not seen before. All right. This, we're going to display... For one customer, we're going to display some customer information, customer name, and maybe some other stuff. All right. We've written queries to pull up one customer. So we know how to do the query for that. All right. We know that we could use a details view to display the customer's name. All right. To pull up all the calls for a given customer. Well, we did that on the other page. We're just going to move it to this page. So yes, we've been able to, to show all calls for a selected customer. Yet there are some aspects of this problem that we haven't done before. What's something that we have not done before? Make a link. All right. So make uh, the field will link to another page. That's one thing we haven't done before. What's another thing we haven't done before? We need to have that two as like the customer value. Right. We need to get the customer ID from here to here. In other words, in this example, the dropdown is what drives the rest of the page, right? We pick the dropdown from there. And we then pull the customer information, and we pull the call information. So in that case, the control that contains the customer ID lives on this page. In this case, though, it doesn't live on this page. Right? We're not going to have a drop down for customer ID. You know, you're not going to have to pick customer one, go to this page, and then pick customer one again. All right. We need to get that ID from here over to there. Yes. Uh, we could. Um, we could, or we could just use the back button, depending on, uh, on, on that. Um, 
I don't necessarily like to build stuff on a page that like duplicates basic browser functionality. Like in that case, going back is just is just hitting the back button, and that'll take us back. So we, we wouldn't really really need that. We could, but we really wouldn't need that. All right. So we've seen how to take a value from a control and populate our data sources. How are we going to get the data from this page to this page, though? How are we going to pass the customer ID from this page to that page? Because there's no, going to be no drop-down on this page to get that value from. So how are we going to get it from there to there? That's a different problem than we've seen before. Any thoughts or guesses or... Yes? In the, uh, you do a question mark for the parameters at the next page. In the control drop-down, there's probably something like a link or something. Like okay. Um, the idea is correct. Let's just, let's just put the more formal words for that. We're going to pass the data via the query string. All right? So what is a query string? If you've ever looked at and if you've filled in a form or whatever, you'll notice that a URL will have the domain, blah, 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 blah. Then it will have the page. Then it will have a question mark after it. And the question mark will often have next to it like parameters. All right? And they're in ordered pairs. There's the name of the parameter, then a value of the parameter. So we'll look at this in a second. If you do a Bing search or a Google search, you'll see your search term up in the URL. That's how it gets it from one page to another, is it passes it as part of the URL. All right? And in our case, we're going to do that. We're going to pass the ID from this page to this page. All right? So what do we need to do? We need to make a link. That link needs to look like this. It needs to say the name of the page, so we might as well call it calls, question mark, ID. It doesn't have to be the word ID, but that makes as good a sense as any, right? We could say customer ID or customer or, or Fred or whatever, but we would want it to be something that was easily understood, so we might as well go with ID. Equals, and then that equals is going to be whatever value was selected in the dropdown. So our link is going to be part static, part dynamic. The static part is going to be this. That's the same regardless of what customer we're reviewing the calls from. The part that's going to be different is going to be this little blank here. So we'll do that, and then we'll need to have this page be able to pull off the query string and use that value in order to do these queries. So these are parameterized queries just like these are. All right, what's the difference? In one case, it's getting the value from the dropdown. In the other case, it's getting the value from the query string. So let's go and do this. And let's first of all go and review what we had last time. And then we'll go and change it to um, add the additional functionality. Are you wanting me or everyone else? Students. Okay. I'm guessing you already loaded Visual Studio earlier. I loaded Visual Studio earlier. I did not open up, however, the application. So I'm slowly learning. Let's go and run this. Oh, we already have a page. 
page called Calls, Curses. Is someone calling me? Probably. I am. I'm getting. I'm getting an estimate on repairing my flute. So I'll bet you that's that. Did you see flute? Flute. Yes, I did. I am. I am in. I have heard. That's not the first time I've heard that. All right. So what page were we working on? We were working on this one. So I'm going to set this as my start page, and I'm going to run it, and we'll take a look at how it behaves, then we'll take a few minutes to analyze this. <laughs> now that's just ridiculous. Who would want to play the bagpipe? All right. So we see on this page we have a drop down. I said we have a drop down. Sometimes I try to time it so it like just perfectly comes up when I say that, but obviously that's not working today. And my new phone I don't know how to silence completely because I swear I had the volume all the way down, but I think it was vibrating. I don't know how to turn off the vibrate. All right, this is not what I want. It's usually a turn down disturb mode. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there is. He's turning it off. <laughs> oh, hilarious. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go that way, huh? All right. All right. It is. Okay, this, this is a story into itself. I, I'm starting to think maybe you guys are figuring me out that, that you can easily distract me into talking about other stuff. Uh, I had a uh, LG G2, which was kind of nice when it came out. Now, of course, there's bigger and badder and all that. But it was really nice as a big screen. But I, I dropped it and broke it once. And... I got it fixed, someone repaired the screen, but it was like never quite the same. It's kind of like my hip, you know. Even though they fixed it, it's still not quite the same, you know, <laughs> as it was before. So anyhow, I dropped it again and, and, and broke it again. And that was definitely not like it was before. And there's like a dead spot on the screen and all this thing. So I went and I ordered this Casio, I forget what it's called, but it's supposedly indestructible, all right. And so it's an Android phone. It does not look good. It is not sleek. It isn't particularly fast, but it is reliable and it gets the job done. And then eventually I'll get a better phone, but until then this is fitting the bill. And the analogy I give for you sports fans out here is that this is like my backup quarterback, right? Not necessarily a star, but will do a competent job until I get a better starting quarterback. So, yes, that, that's exactly what it is. All right, this is the page that I want. So I can go here, and I can see information about the customer. And I pick the customer, and it shows me the customer information. It shows me all the calls, and it shows me the count of the calls. I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to move this to a second page, because this page is kind of cluttered. The other thing to keep in mind, again, as I said before, perhaps you can say this is hypocritical, but... I'm focusing on the programming part of it. For your assignments, you should pay some attention to the design of it, and not just give me something that looks like this. All right, so. I pick the person from the dropdown, and it displays their customer information, all their calls, and it shows the number of calls. All right, so. If we were to look at the queries here, I'm going to get rid of this query. I thought I was going to. I'm going to get rid of this query and this query. All right, yeah, that visual and that query. All right, if we look at this, the 
data source of this contains simply a list of everything from the customer table. Select customer ID, customer name from customer, order by customer name. So again, there's no where clause on that, which means that you do not um, filter out the customers by anything. All right. You could, for example, have a drop down that where you pick the state, and then it showed you the customers just for that state in this drop down. In which case, you'd filter it out, or maybe you would filter for active versus inactive customers, or whatever. But right now, this has no where clause, so there's no filtering. It's simply showing me all of my customers. And I explicitly define the order, again, which you typically want to do if you're doing a listing, because if you don't define the order, the database gives it to you in the order it wants to, which may or may not be the order that you want it to be. All right. The other two queries are very similar. Except this one says select star from customer where customer ID equals question mark. So again, this is a different data source because it's pulling up different things. All right, they're both pulling up customer information, but one is pulling up a list of all customers. This is pulling up a list, uh, I'm sorry, not a list, but this is pulling up one customer based on the customer that we've selected in the dropdown. And if we look at this, that's where we define. Where does that parameter come from? It comes from a control. It comes from a dropdown. Now, thinking ahead, when we do the call list, all right, we're going to have a parameter in there too, but it's not going to come from a control because we don't have a dropdown on that page. It's going to come from the query string. Ah. And in that way, we can pass data from one page to another. All right. Our dropdown then, to show that, um, <laughs> ah, here's where we say we're displaying the name, but behind the scenes we're keeping the ID. All right. Now this one is similar, except it uses an aggregate function. Select count from call where customer ID equals question mark. All right. So. Let's go in and let's make it so that we can click on the two. All right. Now, in order to click on the two, we're going to have to add something to this data source. What do we need to add to this data source? A link. Well, no, not a link. Remember, the data source is simply the raw data. The visual part of it shows whether I choose to format it as a link or whether it's an image or whether whatever. All right? So the visual part of it is going to take the raw data and format it the way that we want it to. So we're not going to add a link here. But we do need something for the link. Well, pardon me. <laughs> what do what do we need to pass as part of the link? The URL, the URL, or the the name of the the page. Well, then we can hard code because that's going to be the same for everyone. We're not pulling that out of the database. But what can't we hard code that we need to pass? Well, what do we need to pass to that second page to pull up one customer and that customer's calls? The ID, right? And right now, the ID is not part of this data source. All right? So we need to put that in here. And when we 
do that, we are going to get an error. I'm saying that in advance so that you don't think I'm just saying that to cover my tracks when this doesn't work. Okay. So I put in the customer ID. And I'll test it. I'll put in an ID. And I get an error. All right. And the last part of this error, uh, the last part of this error message is, is really the crux of the matter. It says your query does not include the specified expression customer ID as part of an aggregate function. Let's go and let's try to explain what that means. Let's look at this. This is a case of I can explain to you why this is true. Or you can just believe me. Alright. And all right. This is an aggregate function, this is not. Okay? That's a column from a database, that's an aggregate function. When you use an aggregate function, everything in your select statement has to be one of two things. It has to be an aggregate function, or it needs to be included in a group by. All right? So, for this to work, I need to say group by... customer ID. Now what does group by do? Group by breaks down totals into subtotals. So let's go in, let's go into access and let's play with this query a little bit. Pardon me? Breaks it down, right. Breaks it down into subtotals. So, let's go into my database and let's create a query. I can go into SQL view and I can paste my query in. And this is a good little troubleshooting technique that you can use. All right. I'm going to eliminate the where clause temporarily. So my query looks like this. Select customer ID count from call group by customer ID. So what is this going to do? This is going to show me customer ID and the number of calls that that customer has. <clears throat> so if I go and run this, I see the customer ID, two, so customer two has one call, customer three has two calls. So I've broken it down by call ID. So I'm breaking it out and showing how many calls each customer has. All right. Now, if I don't break it down by customer ID, I just get the one total. That there's a total of three calls. Okay? Because I haven't said how I want to break it down or how I want the subtotals to be had. All right. Now, the problem comes into when I say customer ID. If I say select customer ID count from call, and I don't have any group by clause, 
What it's going to do is it's going to give me the count of all the calls in the database. Well, what's the customer number associated with those calls? I don't know. There's a bunch of customer numbers, or there could be a bunch of customer numbers. In this case, there's two, right? So I can't show the total of all the calls, the total count of all the calls in the database and show me the customer ID associated with that total. That is nonsensical. It doesn't make sense. Because the total number of calls is the total number of calls. All right? It's not associated with a particular customer ID. It's associated with every customer ID that's out there. So, if I want to see the customer, and sure enough, if I go to run this, it will give me an error. Just like the error that I got in um, Visual Studio. So, the only way that I can show the ID and the count is if I break down the total by ID. Then I can see, all right, customer ID 2 had one call. Customer number 3 had two calls. So, if I put a group by on here, then I am back in business. <coughs> now it can show me the customer ID associated with it because it's broken down by customer ID. And we could continue this thought through if I say, if I said, for example, select state count star from calls group by customer ID, then that wouldn't work because I'm not breaking down the totals by state. All right, I'm breaking it down by customer ID. So I can show the customer ID if I'm breaking it down by customer ID. If I'm not breaking it down by customer ID, I can't show the customer ID. So that's my explanation. If you understood it, great. If you didn't understand it, all right, know this, that when you use aggregate functions, everything that's part of your select has to be either an aggregate function, and what are the aggregate functions? There's sum, there's, there's count, there's average, there's max, there's min. Um, there's a bunch of them, all right? Um, so if you use an aggregate function, everything in your select part of your statement has to either be an aggregate function or included in the group by, all right? So if I just tack on the group by onto this, then it works. All right. Now, this one might be a little confusing because I'm only showing one customer, but that still doesn't that doesn't hold any weight with SQL. You still need to you still need to include it in the group by. All right. So now I'm going to finish. Yes, I'm going to regenerate that. All right. So now when I run this, it works like it did before. Except now I have the ID in that query. So I can go and and I have the ID in there, which means that now I can use the ID, right? So, how, now, I might not want to display the ID there, all right, but I have it. So, let's go and let's make it a link, all right? I'm going to need the ID to make that link. So, I'm going to call my page call list, okay? So, my page is going to be call list.aspx. Now, I need to pass an ID on the query string. So the full name of it is going to be call list.aspx ID equals. And then I'm going to fill in the blank with the ID of the particular customer. So let's go here. And I don't need to change the data to do this because I have all 
the data I need. What's the data that I need? Well, I need the ID. Well, I got that now. I need the number of calls because that's what I decided I'm going to make the text of the link. So, okay, I got that too. I know that the URL is call list. That's what it always is. I can just hard code that in. All right. So I have the data I need to make the link. I just have to go in and change visually the way that that data is being presented. So I'll go here. And I'll say edit columns. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the customer ID. Now, no, I'm getting rid of it from the grid view. I'm not getting rid of it from, or the details view, rather. I'm not getting rid of it from the data source. So I still have that available to make my link. Actually, this is a grid view, but that's whatever. So I get rid of it. I'm going to change the ID or the text for this. Why did it come up with EXPR1001? For the name of this column. Well, it's kind of random. Not really. Random is probably not the best word. It's an assigned number. Yeah, generated. And why is it generated? Well, because the count isn't actually a column in the database. The count's a function. It's an expression. So therefore, expression one, essentially. So I'm going to change this to say number of calls. Actually, I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to start from scratch and put a link here. All right, now that I think about it, it's going to be easier to, to, to get rid of it and to create a link. So I'm going to create a hyperlink. Now, what do I want the header text to be? I want it to be number of calls. here we have four fields. One is called data navigate URL fields, data navigate URL format string, data text field, data text format string. Okay. This is where we construct our hyperlink. All right. I'm going to start with the text field because that's the easiest part. The text field is the, you know, what you're going to click on to be the link. In other words, the text that you're going to click on that is the link. And we could hard code it and put click me here for the text. However, we don't want the words click me. We want the number of calls. And that's contained in the field called EXPR 101. 1001. So, if your text that you're clicking on isn't just some hard-coded text string, but instead comes from the database, then you use a data text field. And you could format it if you wanted to. You know, you could, you could put stuff before and after. We're not going to worry about that here. Now, data navigate URL fields, that is the data that we want to put in the URL. Now, what data do we want to put in the URL? Well, the page name is going to be part of the URL, but what part from the database do we want to put in the URL? The customer ID. So therefore, I'm going to pick here. Oops. Customer ID. All right. They actually give you the ability to put in a bunch of fields because you could actually pass a bunch of things on the URL if you wanted to. All right. We only need the one thing, though. We only need the customer ID. So that's all we're going to pass. So where it says data navigate 
URL fields. That's the data from the database that you want to include as part of the URL. The data text field is the data from the database or from our data source that we want to be the clickable text. Now, we need to describe where we're going to put that data on the URL. So we, we decided that my URL is named calllist.aspx. ID, whoops, should be a question mark. ID equals, and then we need the name of the ID there. All right, or the value of the ID, I'm sorry. So what we do is we put our braces, zero, and braces. All right, let me review that. Let me bring that in a notepad. This is the data navigate URL. Or what's it called? Data navigate URL format string. This goes hand in hand with the data navigate URL fields. So this is data navigate URL fields data navigate URL format string and I realize I did not copy and paste correctly so let me go back and have there if it's hard to read. We have the fields and we have the format string. Now this field, these fields, there could be more of them, right? We can put a list of things in here. What the format string specifies is where we put each thing from this list of fields. And as we do in programming, we start numbering with zero. So this is our field zero. This would be our field one, field two, field three. We use the braces to indicate that that's where we put this particular field. So brace zero brace means that at this point of the URL, we're going to put in the customer ID field. All right. Pardon me? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and we'll, I mean, we'll go over it. I need to go and watch video when I get home. Yeah, and, and we'll go over it again and we can review it and, and you'll, you'll, you'll have opportunity to do this. There'll be lab exercises and and, uh, you know, we can practice and all that. But in a nutshell, what this is doing is this is allowing us to create a dynamic URL, right? Because we want every customer to go to the same page. Call this .aspx, all right? However, we have to tell that page which specific customer we're interested this time. So we have to give a little additional piece of information, all right? It wouldn't do us any good to try to write a separate page for every customer, right? That would be, that would be too much work, right? So we're going to have one page that can handle any customer that we give it. And how we tell that page which customer we want, we tell it via the ID in the query string. And where does that ID come from? It comes from the customer ID in that query. So let's look at this. And run it. All right, 
So notice the two has an underline indicating it's a link. If we put our mouse over it, we can notice down there is the URL for that link, which is call list.aspx question mark ID equals three. The three corresponds to the ID of three. Or we can view the source if we want to see this. So, what's the text of the link? It's that navigate URL text field, all right, which is the count of the number of calls a person has. What's the URL? Well, this part of it's hard-coded. This part of it's the same no matter who we're looking at. Call list dot ASPX ID equals something. What is that something? Well, it's going to be the customer ID that we pull from the database. All right. So now when we click on this, we go to that page, but of course, we haven't defined that page yet, so we get an error. But we can look and verify on the query string that it's calling it the way that we expect it to call it. All right. So now all we have to do is make that last page. And that last page is going to have um, a details view to show the detail of the customer. It's going to have a grid view to show the detail of the calls. All right. So let's go and make that page. I want to complete this, then we'll go back and look at pieces again that are confusing for you. So I want to go through, I want to go through the one example from beginning to end, and then if we need to rewind and, and go back and cover pieces, we'll, we'll do that. So let me go in and create a new page. I already know the name of the page I want. I want it to be call list. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create, first I'm going to create the detail view that's going to show me the customer name. Choose data source, it's going to be a new data source. Remember, data sources are specific to a page. So even though I have on another page a data source that pulls up a customer, I need one on this page. So I'll create a new data source. It is going to be a SQL data source. I'm going to use the same connection. And I'm going to say com select <laughs> star. I was thinking customer already. Select star from customer. I can't hide. <laughs> yeah, it signifies that I am the world's worst typist. <laughs> Do I want to see every customer here? I want to see which customer? The one that corresponds to the ID in the query string. So I'm going to say exactly where, took me a second to realize what you're doing there, where customer ID equals question mark. Now, we don't have a drop down to get that from. That drop down is on another page. All right, but we have that field in the query string. So I can go in and say, where does that parameter come from? It comes from the query string. What is it called on the query string? What did we call it on the query string? We didn't call it customer ID on the query string, believe it or not. If you remember what the URL looked like. We called it. ID, just ID. Pardon me? Oh. 
So we put in ID there. All right. It has to match what we created the link as. Doesn't matter what name we call that field on the query string, as long as whoever's supplying the ID calls it the same thing as whoever's getting the ID. All right. So in this case, I just called it ID. Next, I'll test the query. I'll put in two. All right, there we go. Finish. Now, when we run this, all right, we have number of calls to. When we click that, again, what does the link say? It says call list question mark ID equals three. So when I click this, I go to call list, I pass ID equals three, and then I can use that ID over here to pull up that person. All right, I can then go, and I think I said I just wanted to see the customer name, right? So I can go and edit this and get rid of the other stuff that I don't need to see. So it only shows the customer name, and I can format it and make it bigger or whatever. All right. So now I want to show a list of all the calls. Again, is that a different data source? Yes, because we want to show call information, and we don't have anywhere on this where we're showing call information. So I'm going to go here and say that I want to create a grid view. New data source. SQL data source. Connection string again. Haven't made a connection string since the first time we did this, right? Because it's still just one database. And we want all of these things to use the same connection string. So if we change something about the database, then we only have to change it in the one place, which is where. Where is the connection string stored? In access? No. In the ASP.NET? It is stored as one of the ASP.NET files. It's stored in a web config file. All right. So I pick connection string, because that's the name of my connection string. And I'm going to say, select star from call where customer ID equals what? Question mark. And I'm going to say order by, just for fun, order by call date descending. So we'll show their most recent call on the top and then going backwards through time. Where are we getting that value from? Query string. What's the name of the field? ID. And there's an error. Now, what could that error be? Could be a bunch of things. It's probably my call date. There could be syntax errors in here. So, for example, I could say, I could have a comma there where I don't need one. Or I could have a misspelled table name. Or something like that. My guess is, as was described, that I probably have the wrong field name for call date. So let's look to see what it actually is. Sure enough, call date time. <laughs> so 
now we go and test it and run it. And it looks correct. Why does it say screen? Because that was the description of the problem. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, remember, this is supposed to be like a computer's help desk. Oh, yeah. And yeah, the problem that that customer called for was. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was I was confused for a second as well when I saw that. It's like, hmm. All right, so let's go and run this. And we pick and there we see the customer name with all their call. So again, sort of doing a post inventory. What was different about this was that our parameterized query got the parameters passed and got the parameters in a different way. Remember, the whole idea of a parameterized query is that a piece of the query you know and then a piece of it gets filled in with a specific value at runtime. So, for example, the query to pull the name, the, the customer information, part of that query is the same. Select star from customer, where customer ID equals, boom. That's where you put in the parameter. That's the value that you pass in when you run it. Now, we'll have parameterized queries for everything we do. Because it's very rare in a web database application that you want to do the exact same thing every time. Usually, you know, if you add something, you're not adding the, the identical customer every time. One day you're adding based on what person A filled in on the form. The next day you're adding based on what person B put in on the form. All right, so we're going to see a lot of parameterized queries here. All right. Now. The difference between this and the other parameterized query is we have to get things from one page to another. All right? We can use the controls to pass things from one page back to itself. So for example, here, boom, we see it brings that up. And we can use the ID associated with that to pull up. Um, that information. So we can say that the value comes from the drop-down because it's on that page. The drop-down is on that page. To go to another page though, we can't do that technique. And there's a couple different ways to pass things between pages. Um, this is the first of the ways that we're going to explore. All right? But it's not the only one. All right? This is known as maintaining state. In, in web development terms. Maintaining state is, in a nutshell, how something you do now remembers something that you did in the past. All right? Or put another way, maintaining state is a way of remembering data from one page to the next. In this case, we pick this customer as a customer we're interested in, we have to tell that second page which customer we were interested in. And the query string is one way we can do that. Now the query string is much like, as a parameter associated with it, just like the query does. In other words, if we look at the link, part of that link is hard coded. Call list.aspx question mark ID equals, or yeah, question mark ID equals blank. And that blank we fill in at runtime. And that blank we fill in for, with a field from the database, in this case, the customer ID. So if we look at that link again, that's where we get to this. What do we want to be the clickable part of, of the page to, 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 to call this link? 
Well, I want that number of calls to be clicked on. Right. What is the URL that I'm going to call? Well, again, part of it is hard-coded. Part of it comes from a field in the database. Do that question mark separate that? What is yeah, the question mark is a standard um, HTML thing. That separates the end of the file name from the start of the query string. So, like, if we go into... All right, I went and Googled HTML, all right? It did it a slightly different way. Let's go to Bing. All right, there is the end of the file name. Here is where we start the query string. And the query string are all the parameters that we pass. Now again, some of these parameters are hidden, and they may be based on like your particular machine or whatever. But if you notice, one of the fields, that Q, that's whatever I typed into the text box. So yeah, the, quer the question mark separates the end of the file name with the start of the query string. And so that's going to be hard-coded. This part is the query string. And the query string, the pieces of the query string always look the same. They always go the name of a field, an equal sign, and then a value. Now typically that value we want to be something from the database. So that's why I put the list of fields I want to up here. And then I use the curly bracket zero to say, well, the first field on the list I want to appear after the equal sign, after ID equals. And so that will fill in that blank. The second page then, I, th I think this is the tricky part, getting the link down, all right? Because once you get the link down and once you decide how that works, the second page, the receiving page, is pretty much just like any of the other parameterized queries that we've done, except you're not getting the value from the dropdown. You're getting it from the query string. All right? And in order to do that, you have to know what it's called on the query string. And in this case, it's called ID. So you have to make sure that that's the field in the query string that you go after. Excuse me. Questions about this? All right. Um, rarity of rarities. We're going to end early today. And uh, we'll see you over in lab. I wanted to share something with you. I didn't want to interrupt you while you were Okay. Yeah, I would say everyone's going to lab now to check this out. <laughs>